be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to this episode of Rabbit Trails, along with my partner, my friend, Max Masano. Max, how are you, brother? Hey, man. I'm doing all right. How are you? Come see. Come say, come saw. You know, <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair to partly cloudy. It's been an interesting week this week, you know, some crazy stuff going on. And, um, you know, looking at the business, looking at what's happening, a lot of things that I see that are happening that uh, are, are good. And then there are a lot of things that people are still struggling with. You know, as far as the business goes, um, for us here in California, it's actually starting to come back. So we're very excited about that. Um, we're excited because we're getting rid of our governor too, because that's, that's one of the biggest issues. Um, so in any case, you know, it's starting to come back, but it's erratic, right? So the days of work are, are kind of booked really hodgepodge, you know, like somebody will come in and they'll want yeah. an early morning appointment. Somebody will want, they can't get into later. And then somebody wants in the middle of the day. And then you have three people call you the last two hours. You're there. See if you can squeeze them in. It's kind of craziness, but um, yeah. thank God the business is coming back and we're starting to um, businesses here in California are starting to rebound. And we're very, very happy about that. We, we really believe yeah. that by the time summertime gets here, um, uh, the late summer, if you will, um, things will be much better. And in lots of states, as I see around the country, you know, they are starting to really, their businesses are, are all starting to come back. So I'm very excited about that and very happy about that. In fact, we got some hair shows that are being scheduled already, which I'm kind of iffy on that deal. I'm not sure I want to go squeeze down those aisles with you know people that are breathing down your neck because we still aren't uh we're still not getting the straight scoop from our government you know one guy comes on and says this and one guy comes on and says that meanwhile we're going uh hello just tell me what i can do you know yeah but yeah. um anyway that's happening uh social media is perking along um i noticed that uh <laughs> There are a lot of experts on social media today. I swear, I don't know where this school is where you can go get a degree in expertology. That's what I call it, expertology. <laughs> but um, yeah, you have people on there, influencers, if you will, that um, haven't even been in the industry for six years. Yeah. And suddenly they're an expert. And uh, what I find interesting, though, is the information they're sharing <laughs> is information that came from another source. So they're just kind yeah. of passing it on. So that's the problem when you are a trainer. It is the information that you share. We all get our information from somewhere, right? I mean, we didn't just hatch and have that in our brain. So we all get our information from somewhere. The only difference is, is that in our industry, um, so many people wanted to want everyone to believe that they're the genesis of that information. <laughs> yeah. that, that's really scary because, you know, they were actually cutting great hair before many of these young people were born. <laughs> I mean, we'd also soon, baby. <clears throat> yeah. And, you, you know. know geometry didn't belong to Vidal Sassoon. Nope. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are, that are happening in the business that way. And along with that comes a lot of still misinformation. I, I'm shocked at the misinformation that I hear. That's why you've heard me say this for so long is that Sylvia doesn't want me going on social media by myself because I, I get so frustrated when I get off. I just, and the reason is not that I want the, them to all be right. It's that the people that are listening to that, they take that as the word. Right. And, and they try to operate from that premise, you know, and, 
for us, you know, we try to give them guide points so that they can really, the whole idea, I mean, that's why we have hats that say this, L-W-Y-D-K, learn what you don't know. <laughs> because as I learn what I don't know, I grow. Yeah. And I, there's so many people that really may not be interested in learning. They just want someone to intercede for them. I mean, you've heard in classes that we've taught year after year after year, so we said, hey, look, if you want to understand your hair color brand, dye it out. And yet there are people who have never dyed out the color that they use. And then they get upset because the result is not what they expected. And right. <laughs> If you dye out your color, you'll know exactly, exactly how to work with them. And, and yeah. really, there's more similarities in different brands of color than there are differences. That's what I right. kind of laugh about. You know, because we all want to think that our color is special. That right. nobody has color like we have. And, you know, manufacturers do a great job in that. I, I worked for a company for 26 years. I built robots. That's what I did. I got, I do a training and I would build a robot, right? You may have been in one of their classes. How many of you drove a long way today? How many of you came somewhere right. close? How many of you went to lunch yesterday? You know, you've seen them in your classrooms, right? We built those. And we built them right. because we wanted to create one message, one universal message, same message from every one of the trainers. And so we inundated them. We brainwashed them. And, and truly, that's what you do. If you want to be successful in this business, you have to brainwash your people so that they believe right. you what you believe. And um, Well, it's like... Uh creating a a brand culture and message right and you know i feel like when when you as a trainer when you sound informed about something mm -hmm. people will tend to believe you i mean okay. and i i even when i was like a baby educator and i didn't actually know that much about chemistry i was surrounded by very strong trainers Right. who I just emulated what they said. And because it was kind of with that, that certainty, you know, it just passed on. Right. Until like this year when we sat down and did all of our, our pH testing, right. for, like, you know, in the last, I mean, I would say even eight months, I've come to the realization that there is no such thing as an acidic demi. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus. Yes. I was and, like, there's nothing, there's nothing acid about right. this. But there are you, some that are close to neutral, mm -hmm. but not in the acid range. Yeah. And, and I think that because we are taught that neutral is a safe zone, we think it's okay. But in reality, right. neutral is far above the optimum pH for hair. Yeah. You know, and so, and, and so those are the things you, that you need to be aware of. And, and now, of course, um, you know, understanding, see, for me, understanding the pH chart is very, very important for anybody who works with chemicals. Now, I, I must yeah. tell you, I had the opportunity to watch an interview with a cosmetic chemist who said that, Eh, the pH chart's not relevant to what you're doing. You just need to trust what the chemist makes and trust that the product will perform. Those were the words that they used. Hmm. That really disappointed me. Because right. if you don't understand what you're working with, then you, there's no way you're going to have control of it. And you're going to believe that there's such well, a thing as an acidic demi and an, and an alkaline demi. Right. When in fact, acidic demi is a stretch. It's fudging. 
You're fudging. Remember in marbles? Did you ever play marbles as a kid? Mm-hmm. Okay, and so you had to take your thumb and with you know, and no fudging. You weren't allowed to move right. your hand and fudge. You had to just yeah. flip the marble. See, that's what they do. They fudge. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. And because there's no way for you to validate what they're saying unless you go to the extra step of, you know, testing the product yourself, you either have a choice to believe them or not to believe them. I mean, and I think too, like part of that comes, comes down to, you know, and I know we say this in like at least every other episode, product companies are trying to sell product. They're trying to sell a marketing story right. as to as to why their product, you know, why you should buy it. Why mm-hmm. is it unique? And it, it, I think too that like back in, well, gosh, I'd say it was at least the early 60s, uh, you know, people like Jerry Redding right. made, you know, science really important in our industry. Mm-hmm. And understanding basic chemistry and pH, and what thing you know what happens when the hair interacts with different products that are alkaline right. and acidic, and how to reconstruct hair and all those things, right? And then, like as we kind of moved through the years, that we got less of that and more bells and whistles, right? And then right. I think in the in the last, I would say year maybe two years, science is starting to pick up again. And now product companies are actually having to backpedal a little bit with what they are saying that are key claims about products. Like for instance, I'm gonna just segue right in here. Now you can get bleach with a bonder built inside. You can get demi-permanent color with a bonder built inside. Yeah. You can get permanent color with a bonder built inside because you know why guys, bonders are hot. You know, they're That's selling. the only reason. It doesn't mean they're necessary. It, it's the only reason. But prior to, you know, other companies coming out with bonders in right. their products, there there was some real vague implications from manufacturers that they didn't come right out and say, so-and-so product rebuilds disulfide bonds. Yeah. (laughs) But it was definitely implied. And now, because they're becoming more prevalent, now all of a sudden you actually do see product companies now saying that their, um, their bonders, one in particular, but I've actually seen it from two different manufacturers. Right. Um, helps to reinforce hydrogen bonds. Mm-hmm. Now, let's let's just get a little down and dirty with science. If hydrogen bonds can be, they're the they they account for one third of the hair's total strength. Right. This is true. Um, in addition to salt bonds and yes. disulfide, disulfide yeah. bonds and is it salt bonds that we have the most of, or is it hydrogen bonds? Like, I know we have the least amount of disulfide bonds. Least amount of disulfide bonds. Hydrogen bonds are the most prevalent because, you know, hair, so, it breaks down and rebuild. We do that all the time. Right. So, so you, you, how do you reinforce a bond that when you break, it rebonds anyway? The only way you can do it is by instilling another bond in there, an ionic bond. Right. We'll but is it really going to, is it really going to do anything? I you know, like, for short term, that's all, but nothing, nothing long-term at all. Right. It's all temporary, right. which is something that we've been saying for, I've been saying that for 35 years. It's like, there's nothing you well, can do to repair. We use the word repair hair permanently. <clears throat> Once the hair is broken down, it's broken down. Right. Once, Once the you, steak is well done, it can never be medium you can't, rare again. Right? Yeah, you can't bring it back to medium rare. 
Yeah. You know, and, and it is true and fortunate now that uh, people are starting to back off of what they were saying for some time because now the science is proving what we've been saying all along. It doesn't make any of that bad. It makes some of it unnecessary. If you're using a demi-permanent hair color and you have to have a bonder, you're not really breaking down disulfide bonds with a demi-permanent color. I mean, it's really causing little or no structure structure change to the hair. That's the whole purpose of a true demi-permanent color, to carry in the dye intermediates, develop the dyes without altering the natural color of the hair. That was the total purpose of it. We know that even using something with a pH of 7.1, that's your finished mixture. Mm -hmm. Is it possible on certain hair textures to create some sort of tonal shift? Yes, absolutely. Especially if you throw it under heat for 20 minutes. But for the most part, you're not really going to create, and you're not going to be able to see the tonal shift anyway unless you're creating a contrasting color, unless you're doing, let's say, a red shade on brown hair. <clears throat> when they come back, you'll be able or, to see that line of demarcation. Or maybe you use clear for shine, <laughs> put a plastic cap on them, yeah. and throw them under a hood dryer. Right, right. You know? You know, and, and some so. of those early gummy permanent products, the only reason they ever processed them under heat was because when they were first launched, 1986 to 1988, okay, there was another color line that was heavy in the marketplace. And they were really strong. And they were actually strong all over the United States, but they were really strong in California because that's where they came from. And so when the sales rep would go in, they would say, well, can I process this the way I process this pro- other product? The product was called cellophanes. And so people were processing them under the dryer. Can I put this product under the dryer? Sales rep said, sure. Yeah, why not? Okay came back to the people who created that first initial demi permanent color and said, can they put it under heat? So they made a rule, uh, five minutes, no more than five minutes. Okay. And only for resistant gray, you know, just to increase your gray blending. Those products were never designed to give you a hundred percent coverage. That's why they were called glosses. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about what a gloss is, a gloss really is something that covers, supposedly covers, gives right. you a clear coat, a clear coat, if you will, or a, a very translucent coat of color over <coughs> the color that you apply it to. And so that's the reason that they had that name from the marketing departments, because they were called glosses they were supposed to just enhance what was already there that really was what they were designed to do and they would give you some sort of gray blending as long as they were no more than about 30 to 35 percent gray then along came people who said well i want them to cover gray 100 percent well they're not designed to do that <clears throat> well, I want them to cover gray because the dyes, the way the dyes finished is that they finished more translucent. So in right. 1993 to 1996 was a big push to give you gray coverage with those same types of products. And so the formulas right. had to be changed. And so they changed the formulas and increased the alkalinity <laughs> <laughs> in that color <laughs> so you could get coverage of gray hair right and trying to push the envelope right of the product right to, so, to so, do something that it wasn't really designed to do right initially. so to me you you can have a bonder in there that's great that's wonderful but <clears throat> i really and and uh, you know here's one thing i did i did attend this one interview with this uh color chemist 
And the one thing that this person did say that I totally appreciated them saying is that, um, you know, they're not guaranteeing you how much difference the bonder is going to make in what you can do with the product. Right. They said, well, people think that if I have a bonder in my product, that means that I can take it beyond. And, and at the end of the day, as we've said all along, since this bonder issue started, what now it's in its fourth year, I think. Um, we said, look, if you wouldn't do it to the hair without a bonding product, why would you do it with a bonding product? Right. The hair you probably shouldn't be doing it at all. Is, is speaking to you. You know, you, I think you and I talked about this the other day about an artist who will say, like a sculptor, you'll see just this block of, of stone and they'll say, well, how do you know what you're creating? He says, well, the medium will speak to me. Well, our medium yeah. is the hair. And the hair might be going, hey, wait a minute. I only have two disulfide bonds. Don't be doing anything to me. <laughs> or it's going, help me. Cut. Yes, help Please me. Help me. me. I need to hit the floor. Yeah. Dennis, will you, will you for a second, just to uh, keep talking about bonds for a minute. And, you know, well, first thing is back to ionic bonding. Yes. Right. You know. Those, th I had a really good trainer who you trained, this is before I knew you, who said something really profound. And what she said is broken bonds in the hair can never be repaired. They can be temporarily reinforced or rebridged ionically. Yes. And those are like reconstructors, reconditioners, those Absolutely. type of products. But even before we had those products, you got to tell the story about the salt and the spray bottle. Oh, well, salt, the, the salt bonds that are in the hair are, you know, we use those when we build hair styling products. That's what they're built off of, that we use that. But if you take bleached hair where it's over-processed, so actually the hair, if it's when it's wet and you, you stretch it, it's almost like gummy, yes? All you could do is take, you could take salt and put it in a spray bottle with water, or you could take salt from a salt shaker and just sprinkle it on that hair, work it into the hair, and then you'll find suddenly that hair seems like strong. You can't believe how strong it is because what you've done is you've installed a salt bond or more, more than one salt bond in the hair and the this, this sodium chloride has pushed the moisture out of the hair strand. That's what it does. So, so when the, the biggest problem is when hair has cystic acid damage, it has free ammonia in the hair. That's what they call that. Okay. And so that's why it's retaining water and it's very stretchy. If I put something like sodium chloride, salt, on that hair and work it in, suddenly it expels all the moisture out of the hair and it puts a temporary bond in there. And when you try to pull that hair apart, you know, you think this hair is really strong. So what happened right. was, because that story was told to help people understand salt bonds, that's the reason that story was even told to anybody Mm -hmm. Then suddenly everybody started saying, well, if the hair is really damaged, spray salt, use the salt spray on it, put salt and water and spray it on there and it'll hold color like you can't believe. Well, it won't hold color for very long because those bonds are temporary, <laughs> you know, but so, that's exactly that gives you an example of, of what's happening inside the hair when we're putting and an ionic bond is a strong bond. It actually feels yeah. stronger than a disulfide or a colvent bond. And right. so ionic bonds are great. It's just that they're temporary. Right. I mean, it's the same thing with protein, right? It's like protein is great, but really, if you look at it, protein is a polymer. <laughs> That's what it is. They, they, they coat or glue the hair back together. And that, that's really what we're doing with any of those types of proteins today. 
So the, the story moral of the story is, yeah, yeah. And the moral of the story is Morton Salt, the original bond builder. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Yes, indeed, sir. Yes, his original bond builder. You know. And, be, and along with that was uh, cow hooves, hide, and horns, you know. We made a product that was a glue, basically, is what it was. Yeah. And in fact... Till, till that mad, mad cow came out, and then that went away. Right. You could take that product, and you could pour it in a dish and leave it set overnight. And when you came back, it would be hard like a rock. Because mm -hmm. okay, really, what you were doing was putting a cast around the hair strand. And, and that yeah. like so, literally a support structure. <clears throat> exactly. Because a physical one. Right. Because hair in a damaged state will begin to unravel. You know, remember right. it's a coiled, it's a coiled fiber. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it will start to unravel by putting a cast around it. It kept it from unraveling. You know, so, so all of those things were precursors to some of the things we do today. Most of the, the proteins we use today are vegetable or plant-based proteins. Yeah. And the reason for that is, number one, molecularly, molecularly, they'll penetrate the hair better. And um, they also don't have the same side effects as you know, some other proteins that were animal-based proteins. I mean, that's the whole thing about right. today. We don't even have animal-based proteins uh, that I, that I know of. I mean, well, you can still buy Apogee <laughs> yeah, online. I, was just say, I think that's, I think that's the only one right. that's still, and right. that one, that one might even have been altered to be a combo of right. plant and animal, but yeah. I don't know that for sure. And the other thing got, too is, is that like, oh, go ahead. You've got a new bond builder that's not a bond builder. It just rebuilds the, the structure of the hair forever. That's, that's the ad line forever. So if you look at the ingredient deck on that new product, you'll find that one of the ingredients is something called acrylites. And if you look at what acrylites are, they are really a version of liquid plastic. They are used in the nail business to make artificial nails. But this As company an acrylic. Is, mm -hmm, this company is using them in its hair reconstructing product. Mm -hmm. You know, so 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 that's what you're using. I mean, you're literally coating the hair. You're not rebuilding the disulfide bonds permanently. You're not doing any of that craziness that right. they say. Uh, you're just really protecting the hair. I'm not saying the product's bad. I know right. I have no need for it, um, especially after I looked at the ingredient deck. I really have no need for it. I, I, it, it doesn't fit into my repertoire. Uh, because, Norm, you know, Max, I've been doing hair for over 40 years. I've been doing global yeah. bleaching. I've, I'm doing all that. I've never used a bonding product in my bleach, I've never had a need to do that. Sure. Do I use a bonding product? I do, but I don't use it in my lightener because I know how far I can take the hair. Right. You know? Uh, well, what I think is so interesting is like throughout this whole sort of thread, it's still the, the message is still the same kind of as it was back in the days of Jerry Redding. Oh, support yes. and reinforce right you know now you know in the you know 2020s we're still supporting and reinforcing with new technology it's the same with hair color hair color hasn't really changed no you know in the last since the first 1908 right so hair care products Yes, there have been advances in technology, but there haven't been such great advances that it's, right. you know, much different than what we were doing back then. Things yeah. smell better. They have better slip. You know, sometimes they last right. longer. Right. But again, you know, back in the days of PPT and Climatress, 
you still had to continue to use those products to keep right. adding more of those ionic bonds. And that's the message that I want really to, to get to our audience. Yes. If your bond builder says that they need to take something home and continue to apply it to the hair, it is yes. temporary ionic bonding that's happening. Right. Right. And I, to me, home care is so vitally important to support any of that because <laughs> I remember when I was working in the laboratories and working on some product development with the chemist there. And I said to them, I said, so, so this is, and I drew out the little, you know, the hair strand that we all see in the chemistry class where it shows the hydrogen bonds, the salt bonds and the disulfide the bonds, the latter. Yes. And where we break the disulfide bonds and we go, now you have a positive and you have a negative charge. And so now our protein goes in and it's positive on one end, negative on the other. And it builds that bridge, connects that bridge. Shh, and magic. They, they looked at me, <laughs> they laughed. I go, what do you mean? This is Dennis. If you bleach the hair, the disulfide bonds are dissolved. Okay, there's no more disulfide bonds left there. I mean, you, what, what you leave remaining, you know, there's some structure, but for the ones that you destroy, they're gone. Yeah. You know, they're not even hanging out. So when you use something to restructure that hair, you're actually putting a whole bond back in. You're reinforcing right. the broken bond. So, so that part of the story is true. And it is creating a temporary bridge. That's true but it's not creating a temporary bridge between the positive and negative that are left supposedly right. hanging in the hair. It's really, it's like in construction, sometimes when you're building a house and you have a two by four standing up and it's going to be in a doorway, which is you don't want it to collapse. So you put one two by four on one side, one two by four on the other side. So you have three two by fours back to back to back to give strength. That's what's happening in the hair. Right. You know, I mean, you know, anyone, if you want to put this to the test, mix up your lightener with 40 volume, add, add a bonding product, take some hair and apply it to it and leave it on for 90 minutes. Right. That hair will probably not be in better shape than when you started. Well, because you know lightener, is a decomposing agent right. period it is it the longer it's on the hair the more damage it's going to do right it's not going to restore anything no period and, and you know what's really funny is there's a guy on youtube who uses a very famous bonding product he decided he would test it against hair where he didn't use any bonding product at all he did three applications on each hair strand okay three applications they let let him set for an hour on each time he did an application so three hours on the hair when he combed it out he really couldn't tell the difference between the one that had the bonder and the one that didn't have the bonder and he okay. says i don't know he says i don't know what to say I'm going to use this because I think it's helping, but there's no way for me to tell. Right. So bonders, it's all good. You know, it's a hot item. We pay more for it because it's new and it's different. You know, we don't want to hear it that it's boring. And so we'll buy it. And the funny thing is some of these, they're on the cycle. They're on the, the they're on the merry-go-round. So, they were the same technology we were using in the 60s and 70s, but now we're in the 2020s, and now they're coming back in, and they're, they're called new technology. Because here's the thing you have to always remember. In the whole scenario, there's one thing that hasn't changed, and that is the human species. <laughs> the hair that you have today carbon oxygen hydrogen nitrogen and sulfur is the same chemical com component same chemical combination of your great grandma's hair 
or your ancestors here, carbon, oxygen, yeah. hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. That has not changed. So, you know, that's the one thing that is the, that is the one thing that is the static in this whole story. You know, we like to think technology makes a big difference. It does. It helps us. We have products, like you said, Max, it gives the hair more slip. They, they give shine to the hair. They don't build up as much as some of the products we used in the past. We have a lot of things that we've, advancements that we've made in cosmetics, but yet there's still that underlying core that is still part of the structure. You know, you still have to use an acid and an alkali in order to change the color of the hair. I'm sorry. You know, you say, well, right. what if that the guy who goes out in the sun, he spends a month in Hawaii, he and he doesn't color his hair. Well, wait a minute. Where is he? He's at the beach. Okay. What's the beach made? You got salt water, you got salt in the air, sodium chloride, salt. Well, because salt has a neutral pH, the pH is seven. It will change. It will swell the cuticle. Do you think? I think so. Yeah. And, and then if you have swell the cuticle. You expose the cortex. If you expose the cortex, then the uh, electromagnetic waves, the UVA, UVB waves, can go in there and they can break down the structure of the hair. They can lighten the hair. That's right. how that happens. The the wind, the oxygen. You know, there's it's so much windier by the sea. You yeah. know, and what, like we talk about oxygen lightens hair. Mm -hmm. That's why your hair lightens right. when you live closer to the sea, you know, because you, you basically are having. <laughs> I'm closer to the sea. Isn't there a song called Down by the Sea or something like that? <laughs> something or Down by the River. Down by the a river. Man down by the river. Yeah, I remember you know, that what I would What I would go out on a limb and say to everyone if you really wanted to do yourself a favor and not only improve your client's hair colors when they come back to you for their next visit, but also the condition of their hair, there's a few things that I think every client should have. And this is strictly my opinion, but I think Dennis, you'll agree. Mm -hmm. One is a clarifying shampoo. Absolutely. To use, you know, once every week, once every two weeks. Most people's water is treated. It's, you know, not great. It's full of metals, it's full of chemicals. And, you know, you just need to do a little hard reset to get all that stuff out of there. Yeah. Um, a deep treatment, like some kind of conditioning mask, reconstructor, you know, something for strength if the hair is weak or something for moisture if the hair is dry you guys would prescribe it and, you know, put them on that regimen. And also, you know, if, especially if they're like a redhead, you know, uh, a pigmented shampoo and conditioner to mm -hmm. use like maybe every third shampoo, because uh, our friend Leland Hirsch, yes. you know, he said one thing that was so profound to me and he said, What's not putting color in the hair is taking it out. So mm -hmm. even your most color safe shampoo is going to remove a little bit of color because that's right. just the nature of the chemistry. Right. That's, so, that's all part of it. You know, right. the color is going to break down over a period of time. That's what we call fading. Yep. And, and so, so you've got to maintain it at home. I totally agree with you. I think clarifying shampoos are important. I think that also you don't need a harsh clarifying shampoo. No. You know, clarification or chelation is really works on a positive negative charge. Exactly. So like you could use a chelating shampoo that is down in a low pH, 4.5 to mm -hmm. 5.5, right within that yeah. normal range for hair. But it's the way that the shampoo is built and the types of surfactants or non-surfactants that are, you know, non-surfactants are surfactants that are used in sulfate-free shampoos. <laughs> okay. right. So, you know, th those kinds of things that are used to keep the hair clean. Remember, the hair is like a filter. It picks up yeah. anything. And so you've got to keep yeah. it clean. You also have to keep it um, in a nice compact fashion, that's a, a deep treatment will help you do that. Uh, that will help keep it in a, 
and keep it flexible. You know, you want your hair to have flexibility in it, some bend so that it, your hair is not brittle. Sometimes hair yeah. becomes brittle if you're not, even though moisture makes up a small percentage of hair structure, it's important to be using something to replace that 18 MEA, if you will. That's the name for the natural lipids that coat and protect the hair. So naturally the lipids That's right. that your body produce, those natural lipids are supposed to maintain and protect your hair. But if your hair is chemically treated or if you're, you're doing a lot of mechanical stress to the hair, you're, you're going to be eliminating some of those natural lipids. So you have to replace them. You have to put some things, right. you know, put something in there, replace them. Remember, the more you chemically treat the hair, the more you break down those natural lipids that lie between the cuticle layers. So yeah. that's important to use. I totally believe that pigment and shampoos today are especially important uh, based upon people's behavior. You know, people that are shampooing, you know, every day, they yeah. need a pigmented shampoo because their hair is not going to hold on to color like other people's will because they're exposing right. it, you know, swelling it, constricting it, exposing it to heat. You know, heat is not good for hair. Too much heat is not good for hair. Um, hair will burn. I don't know whether you know that or not, but it will burn. And it's not yeah. a pretty smell. You know, so <laughs> those are things you've got to keep in mind. And then I yeah. always believe that some sort of a protective spray uh, to help you yes. with insulating against heat because we use tools that are very, very hot nowadays. And it, for me, I find them totally unnecessary, you know, 450 degrees. I mean, I, I can't imagine why you need that, that high of a temperature, but for us, and, and then some of them have temperature dials, which I think is really dumb for the hairdresser because we like off and hot. We don't want there's, to try to no find happy a, medium. <laughs> yeah. So I think that a, a thermal insulator, if you're using hot tools on your hair, is going to be very, very beneficial. So all of this is part of what I talk to my clients about the first visit in the salon. You know, right. I, I say to them, you know, I'm going to do the best I can to create a beautiful result for you, but you're going to have to help me. And the way you can help right. me is by maintaining it at home while you're away. Right. You know, it's all a balancing act. Right. It and is. That's, and that's really what we're what we're trying to do. It's like, you know, kudos to anyone who's using a bond builder and it's making your business better. You know, we don't want to take away from that. No, but it's you know, like the thing to to always keep in mind is there is never just a cure all for a pro for right. a problem. Right. You know, it is, you know, what we do is as hairdressers, we are like doctors. We prescribe products based on the needs of the hair. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone comes to you and their hair is trashed, putting another chemical on it with a bonder in it is not going to make it in better condition, period. It just, right. it just physically can't happen. Right. So. Yeah, so I, I think that's an important thing. I mean, um, it's important to understand that and to yeah. understand that it's it's just part of our industry now. Yeah. Um, and it's important for us to un educate ourselves so that we're able to share or articulate this message to our clients, you know, because it's for their benefit, you know, right. making their hair look the very, very best it can and keeping their hair looking its very best. And, and trust me, they are subjected to a lot of misinformation just like we are because they, they read articles where people say, you know, blah, 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 this is terrible, don't believe this. Right. And, you know, so they're exposed to that too. So you have to really validate what you're doing with your clients and make sure that they understand that your goal, and it should be your goal, is to keep their hair looking its very, very best. Um, my mentor always said, beautiful hair color begins with two words, and that is beautiful hair. You can't paint trash and have amazing results. If you paint right. trash, 
all you have is a different color of trash. Right. And so those are things to keep in mind yeah. that why it's important for us to educate ourselves and become grounded in the information so we can share that with our clients. I truly believe that informed clients are the most loyal clients that there, that there is. Um, there's nothing like having a client that is informed because yeah. number one, you're the one who informed them and they're going to believe in you. I, I, Max, look, I always, yeah, go ahead, please. You got oh, no, I was just going to, in, in closing, one of the best mantras that I've ever adopted with hair color is if I don't think that color is going to look good in two weeks or 10 shampoos, I, I won't do it. Right. You know, I'll do something that the hair can handle. That, that was it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, look, we were going to talk about several things, but we're already at the end of our time slot. Right. And, uh, we do want to tell you this, that our program on May 16th is getting great response. It's called Delete It. It is a journey into the world of direct dyes. If you're still interested in being part of that program, you can find it listed on our website at www.gurunation.net. Uh, we want to thank you for watching us here on YouTube and uh, for recommending your friends to watch us and sharing our information um, we are very, very grateful for that. And hopefully you have found the information we share with you beneficial. And uh, hopefully you've had fun, you know, listen to us chatter away with each other. And <clears throat> we invite you to visit us on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And we invite you to come to our um, page on Facebook called Guru Nation. Uh, we have lots of information that we post there as well. And check out, uh, you can check out my IGTV. You can check out Max uh, IGTV. So you've got lots of, ref of things to refer to, use them as a resource for information. And um, we have our first live program coming up July 11th and 12th. Uh, it is the first class of our Pinnacle for Hair Color, which is a six day session broken into three two-day programs. And so we've got that up on our website as well. But in any case, um, I thank you all very much for watching. And Max, it has been fun. And oh, oh, okay. Our ride oh. is here, brother. <laughs> it has all been right, fun. Man. Uh, I thank you, my friend, for sharing your wisdom and uh, for uh, sharing your humor. <laughs> it's been a fun session today. This is uh, episode Definitely. number 18, and we wish you happy Cinco de Mayo uh, tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, you guys are going to have a uh, Taco Wednesday, right? Is that what it will be? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Taco In any Wednesday. case, listen, you guys have a great day. We wish you great success, and we look forward to seeing you again. But until then, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out. How about you, Max? I'm out. Thanks, right. everybody. Everybody take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.